amazing to be the first speaker on the first session on Space on Equity. Thanks for joining you guys. Uh, uh, as I said, my name is uh, Sarah Williams, and I'm director of the Leventhal Center for Advanced Urbanism, uh, where also I am faculty in the Department of Urban Study and Planning. And my work really focuses on using data and data visualization to communicate policy changes. And so a lot of uh, the work that we do in the lab um, is meant to um, uh, bring data to the public, but also policymakers. So you'll see how we do this in uh, a project that we recently worked on in New York City called Spatial Equity NYC. And I just want to also recognize the research associates from the Leventhal Center that worked on this project. So Spatial Equity NYC, uh, you guys can check it out on your phones. Uh, it's a mapping tool created through a partnership between the LCAU, uh, which is the Leventhal Center, uh, and MIT in an uh, organization called Transportation Alternatives, which is a nonprofit transit advocacy association in New York City. Um, and the tool reveals inequities in the provision and quality of public space in New York City. And the tool is intended to be a resource for city councilors, community board leaders, public space advocates, and public use um, in having access to open data. So that's why I framed earlier, what I'm really trying to do is bring open data to uh, policymakers at large. It visualizes data on human mobility, urban health and environment and correlated demographics in data to reveal inequities and how they are spatially distributed across the city. Um, and the tool stands out for many similar tools in that the data is aggregated at the council district level. So rather than having data at the census track level or data um, at um, the zip code level, we uh, aggregate the data at the councilman. So what we wanted to do, or our question was, how do we create an equity mapping tool that draws together multiple data metrics available through NYC's open data and visualizes them in an accessible and legible format? We saw three main problems that we wanted our tool to take on. So while data might be open, one might not be able to use it. So a lot of the data in New York City's open data portal is available to download. I'm like, is that feedback? No, it's just something in the hall. I'm like, is that my microphone? Uh, but, um, you know, so like, if you go to the New York City open data portal, you might not be able to interpret or even think about what that means for your council district and how your council district measures up with other council districts. The other problem that we sought to get to address is how to bring these multiple open data layers together to create indicators of equity. And then um, open data is often not aggregated at the scale of these political boundaries. Um, so those are the three problems we address. So if you look at New York City's open data portal, it's great, there's a wealth of information, uh, but the mapping tool uh, doesn't really help us understand um, how we are doing relative, how one council district is doing relative uh, to another. Um, and when we started this project, oh, I think like this Zoom, I wonder if I can move this over. I can. Perfect. Um, you know, spatial um, equity is defined very differently across cities and their specific equity issues um, and organizations to seek to and investigate and advocate for. So when we started this project, we were also trying to understand how to define what is spatial equity. Um, and we looked at a number of tools across a number of cities. Um, and really we are focusing on looking at inequities in uh, public space and the provision of public space. So the accessibility uh, to uh, public space indicators um, is what we really focused on in this project. Uh, so um, we co-designed this tool with transportation alternatives, uh, focusing on this definition or interest in public space in the city. Um, 
And we, of course, could take numerous data sets, like we had a list of something like 15 open data sets that we wanted, not 15, sorry, 50 or 60 open data sets that we wanted to look at. And in order to scale the tool in the first release, we had to really pare that down to 15 indicators that we wanted to look at for the beta release um, of version one. Um, so we focused on three main issues, health, environment, and mobility. So looking at asthma, noise pollution, traffic fatalities and injuries, surface temperatures, peripheral surfaces, tree canopy, park access, um, and then mobility issues, uh, bike parking lanes and so forth. And this is obviously because we are working with transportation alternatives. Their interest was really thinking about how access to public space affects uh, the environmental conditions, but obviously their interest is more on how mobility or access to mobility issues. And I think one thing I found when I did a survey of equity tools that have been developed, there are numerous ones. There's ones from um, the EPA and so forth. These ones that are hyper-specific help uh, allow um, the targeted audience to make better policy decisions, which we'll see in a second. So. Spatial equity tools exist at the federal level, such as EJ Screen, um, but they do not aggregate data at local political boundaries. So here you can see um, uh, the EPA's tool, uh, which looks at things at a uh, census tract level. Um, so our solution to some of these problems that we saw um, was um, to create a uh, to, to uh, convert information into uniform boundaries that are quick and accessible, to recreate one tool that includes multiple equity metrics and improve utility by reporting data at the city council district scale. So let's take a look at Spatial Equity NYC. Sorry, it took us so long to get here, um, but um, users can choose to explore spatial equity through citywide data across all of New York City or through searching on a specific council district, neighborhood, or address. In developing the tool, we had two key users in mind, city councilors and community activists. Um, and that's the tool was developed to cater to how they might seek information in the tool itself. Um, so let's say we click on citywide data. Users um, have uh, core categories of data metrics to investigate. Uh, for example, under the health tab, which we're looking at here, adult asthma rates can be displayed across the five boroughs of the cities and users can toggle between a chart view and a map view. And in the chart view, uh, the interactive histogram allows users to view the rankings of city council districts in comparison to others. And the solutions panel on the right introduces a series of potential solutions to tackle the specific equity issues. So here we're looking at where our council district eight falls within asthma rates, and you can see it's at the top compared to the citywide average. Uh, but then we can also look at that uh, in a map view. So now we're looking uh, where district eight is in terms of the highest uh, amounts of asthma rates, and you can see that it's surrounded by ne other neighborhoods that also have um, those high asthma rates. Then users can compare how the highest levels of asthma also happen um, in some of the poorest uh, neighborhoods in New York City by adding uh, demographics to the map. So here you can explore the map on one side while also looking at socio-demographic information. And we have poverty levels among uh, a number of other socio-demographic uh, indicators. So let's say you want to look at your own community and how it's doing in the various indicators. Um, so you can pick uh, your own uh, district. So here we're looking at City Council District 37. Um, and um, you can type in an address or you can type in your district. Like you might not know what district you are in, so you can actually type in your address to find it. Um, and you notice at the bottom it notes the three issues that are most problematic here, bus lanes, surface temperature, and uh, traffic injuries. Um, once you click on a particular layer, so here we're looking at surface temperature, you can see how the surface temperature ranks. Uh, so 
City Council District 37 ranks ninth out of 51 uh, council districts uh, with the average temperature above uh, 1.29 Fahrenheit above the rest of uh, New York City. Um, and then um, if you zoom in further into the district, you can see how the data ranges across the neighborhood. So you can see even though we're um, aggregating the data within council districts, we then do split it across uh, census tracts. So you can see that Cypress Hills is a little bit different uh, from Bushwick or Ocean Park uh, within that, that council district. Um, you can then click this chart view. So it, here at the top, you see we're at the map view and then you could click a chart view. Um, and when you switch the community profile report card, you get a detailed breakdown of how that community performs across multiple metrics. And here we see um, a District 37 is performing in the top three equity issue categories. So you can see uh, where they are in uh, bus, bus lanes. Um, so they have the least amount of bus lanes. Um, you can see here in terms of surface temperature and then uh, traffic vitalities on the higher side. Um, but I think what's important is that we wanted to also provide solutions. So not just say, okay, these are where you're most problematic compared to other districts, but that um, these are ways that you can uh, solve that issue in this particular uh, area. Um, clicking on an, a particular issue, so let's say here we're clicking on bus lanes, um, you can actually look at where it falls um, across surface temperature, across the, the different areas, um, and make comparisons this way, so kind of see which district is doing better or worse. Um, and so, uh, I think what's helpful is just to see how the city councilmen have used it. So we released this tool in October. Uh, we've had over 10,000 uh, users, uh, unique users to the tool itself. Um, and then what we did after we released the tool is have interviews with uh, councilmen just to see how they're using it. So this interview um, with Christopher Marr from Council District 1 um, he's talked about, um, how, you know, David was interested in looking at mobility metrics. Um, he's, yeah, Council Miss District 1 is in downtown Manhattan, and he knows traffic volume is an ongoing challenge, but he wanted to get a concrete understanding of how traffic congestion varied across his district and compared to the rest of Manhattan. Um, by selecting the traffic volume, he used the histogram to show that at the borough level, Manhattan suffers the most from traffic congestions. Um, and a small text description also describes how traffic volume is related to air pollution um, and bus speeds. Um, and he saw that council district one ranks as one of the worst council districts in terms of uh, uh, traffic congestion. So you can see that up here. Um, switching the map converts traffic volume with all of Manhattan is a challenge. Um, and, uh, but zooming in further, David saw that while Council District 1 is ranked one uh, of the better cases for traffic volume in Manhattan, Chinatown um, actually suffers some of the highest cases of traffic congestion. Um, so this gave David a clear picture of where to investigate the policies needed. Um, and um, David also related traffic volume to race and ethnicity, uh, giving him a sense of which groups of people it would be valuable to include and uh, consult with the community. So here you can see the demographics along uh, with traffic volume. Um, and he was also able to see um, uh, where District 1 and some of the solutions to the, the problem. So. Uh, Spatial Equity NYC was released in October, um, um, and since that, we held a kind of series of workshops with uh, numerous councilmen. Um, uh, here you can see some of the Zoom workshops online. And since its launch, uh, there's been a number of news stories. Um, so news, this is very disorienting. <laughs> 
<laughs> like trying to concentrate and then the government's still like, up. Uh, welcome everyone. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys can ask questions, but uh, Spatial Equity NYC launched in October. So one of the things that we wanted this tool to be used for is not just councilmen, but also uh, thinking about uh, journalists who might want to tell stories. Um, and so a number of news stories have been used uh, with spatial equity. Uh, additional um, stories have used the tool itself. Um, we have numerous treat tweets that highlighted councilman performance. Um, and even uh, this uh, councilman uh, said she's become addicted to it. And we didn't, she didn't actually even come to one of our workshops. She just found it online and she uses it a lot to advocate for the needs of her district, which is in Edmere, which is in a, a far out area of Brooklyn. Um, so we are very excited by the use of councilmen and I'm right at my 15 minutes. So I will uh, stop here but excited that it's been used um, and we've had clicks from all over the world. Um, and one thing that we need to look into more closely is that a lot of the use has been coming uh, from Manhattan, uh, the Bronx and uh, parts of Brooklyn, but the farther out areas of Queens, uh, we need to address and target them more. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.